Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about gathering reference and we're not actually going to need any art tools for this because it's just about getting what you need to start a design project. So I'm just going to be using uh, Google as a search engine and I'll also make a folder on my desktop to contain the things that I find or you can use any sort of solution to find uh, and gather things together. So whenever you're starting a project you're probably going to need some sort of visual reference. If you use none, you're being lazy and also naive. There's no way that you know exactly what something looks like in totality with absolute perfect precision and detail, no freaking way. And also, even if you do know about one particular thing, you couldn't possibly know about the vast numbers and types of things. So don't kid yourself and do a little bit of research before you start any sort of project. For the sake of um, demonstration, I'm just gonna use sword. Okay. Just the word sword all by itself and I'm just going to immediately go over to the images tab and just see what pops up here. So I've got, for some reason it didn't fully, there it goes. Um, here's just what pops up immediately. Across the top we've got all of these subcategories and you know specializations that we could click on if we wanted to. But immediately what should strike you is that there are a lot of different kinds of swords. There are a lot of different kinds of toys and real swords and historical swords and replica swords and it just goes on and on and what kind of sword would I want to make? I have no idea. And I have no idea because I haven't thought about it very much yet. But if I click on some of these I can see like this is a novelty and it's made out of wood. Okay. This is something very modern looking with even like composite and metal parts and I can see some hardware in there. There's no way that's historic. This is an illustration. So I have no idea where to start even. You might have a fictional background that you have in mind. You might have a historic setting that you have in mind. You might have a really cool character with magic or imaginary things that you have in mind. Somewhere, something is going to help you, but it's your task to find out what. Where is that thing that's going to inspire you and help you? This one appears to have like some sort of Egyptian hieroglyph here, but then it's actually in English. It's also so blunt that it could never cut anyone, and I guess it's like for kids. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy how much stuff you can find. Like, the world is filled with interesting stuff that you probably would never expect, never imagine. Um, things that um, you wouldn't have thought might be relevant, might end up being relevant. This appears to be like an archaeological find. And then the hilt and cross guard, which are names of parts of the sword, if you didn't know that already. Um, are very interesting, but the blade is completely degraded. So let's take a step back then from just looking at images immediately, right? If I go back up to the top or I hit the back button, I can go back to all. And then one of the first results you're going to find if you type in just any noun is going to be a Wikipedia page. Let's open that, okay? So we can learn a little bit about swords. Now I know what you're thinking. It's like, oh boy, art has turned into homework and history assignment or something like that. It's like, well, no, not exactly, but you can't just design in a vacuum. You can't assume that you know enough immediately. You gotta at least take a look. So we've got histories of sword, Bronze Age, Iron Age, Greco-Roman, Persian, Chinese, Middle Ages, early modern history, late modern history, morphology, aha. Okay, morphology refers to the parts of a sword. That seems helpful. Oh look, a helpful illustration to tell me what all those parts are. That's something that I didn't know. So let me start out with my folder. I'm gonna say sword design. And typically, even for um, any other typical assignment that I give myself or I do at home, I'll have a folder for everything, like my art, um, my references, anything. And I may also have one extra folder inside of that just to keep it all clean uh, as my reference or ref. So I'll just go down to, assuming all my art stuff goes up here, my references will go in here. And I'm going to take that picture and just put it in there. Okay. So now I've got on my computer, so if my internet connection goes out or if I want to take this somewhere, a helpful little diagram that tells me what all the parts of a sword are. That's a really good start. So at least I know if I'm referring to that thing behind your hand that stops you from slipping off the grip, I'm referring to a pommel. If I'm talking about this bit that stops someone else's sword from sliding down and slicing your fingers off, I'm talking about a cross guard or quillions, which I didn't know was a thing. 
And apparently there's like a rain guard or chap, chappy possibly. Ricasso, I don't even know what a ricasso is, but it's this cool part right here. A fuller, an edge, a central ridge, a point, right? And then they're even talking about what's strong and what's weak on this blade. What cons is considered the hilt? What is considered the blade? And even a scabbard. So some really helpful stuff here. Scabbard is the thing that you carry around a sword in, right? Try not to assume that you know some of these terms also. So that was a really good find right away. Then they go on and go on. And then there was this typology thing as this next section. It's saying different types of swords. Ooh, maybe I'd like that, right? And then they're listing a few, but there are no pictures. Okay, so we think visually it would be helpful to have pictures. We could read all these articles. We could take a quick peek over here at types of swords, African swords, Asian swords, European swords. And just to scroll through, we found a link to other articles, right? Like a master link. You could also start opening up like a text document in here. Put this right inside of ref or you could put it outside. So I'm just gonna do a new text document. I'm gonna do sword links. If it becomes that important that you've got to do a long form project where you've got to collect a lot of things together, then why not just make a list of all sorts of resources? So this article right here, maybe I'll come back to, maybe I won't, right? So let's take a look at, how about we just take types of swords and we just type that into a search, right? Types of sword. And look at the images. And holy crap, look at that. We've got a bunch more responses that tell us not just what the types of swords are, but what they look like. Some of these are drawings, right? Some of these are bound to be photographs, like down here, okay? And we get all sorts of different ones. So right up at the top here, just immediately, there were a couple of graphics that look pretty useful. A falchion a short sword, a gladius, a rapier, a dado, dadeo, I think, uh, shemshir, scimitar, odachi, oh boy, I can't pronounce that one, it's like an L-W-E-I, luehander, luehander, okay, so I definitely want this, right, because that's gonna help me if the type of sword I'm choosing is maybe too boring or something that's hard to draw or paint or whatever it is. Um, is this an exhaustive list? Probably not. I mean, I can even see one here, uh, Kopesh, that I didn't see in this image. Is it there somewhere? I don't see it. So this is not an exhaustive list, but it's a, a really good place to start, at least. So maybe just to remind myself, I'll drag this second one, but really I'd prefer here we go. There's some really weird ones right here. Take that one down. If we're dealing in fantasy, weird is okay. Let's take a look down at where did those weird ones go. There they are. Uh, Mesopotamia, Kopesh. Okay, so we got it. Um, Canaanite, Kopesh. Egyptian, uh, Assyrian, uh, Barian, uh, Falcata. Very cool. Greek, Kopis, right? I don't know what all these swords are for. But now I at least know that they exist, and I know that there's a wide, diverse world of swords out there, and this is getting me started in the direction that I might want to go. So I could pause my research there for a moment and look at these types of swords and decide if there's one that really you know, lights a fire for me and says, that's the kind that I would like to make. I'm gravitating towards the weirder shaped one just because that's interesting. These common types probably all have Slight differences depending on maker, depending on um, maybe region, but I like these because they're very interesting looking. So let me zoom in and pick one. Like I like this Greek copus, and I also like the Nepalese kukri. They're they're really cool shapes. So maybe I've narrowed the field down to that. Uh, then maybe what I should do is do a search for that. So how about a Greek copus? look at some more images and go, hey, there we are. There's some real world swords. There's a guy holding one. Hey, this is a YouTube video where he's gonna talk all about it, right? So maybe I go there and I save that link into my text document. Here's a really good kind of like standard side view of this sword, which I can drop into my reference folder here. 
Um, here's one that's got some embellishments on it. Maybe I want that. Um, you can also look at the other uh, images that come along with the one that you click on. Oftentimes the recommendations down here are really good. For instance, I can see the thickness of the blade. I can see that this is full tang, which is another concept in um, making swords and knives that the metal extends all the way through the, the grip back there. I can see where the thickness of the blade tapers down into a cutting point and how it tapers down to a cutting point. All useful things for visual research for if I'm going to paint and draw these things. This appears to be someone's 3D model with a um, scabbard of some kind. Maybe it's not, maybe it's just a really nice photograph. I don't know. Oops, accidentally went somewhere. It's like cutlery. Um, this one right here, I just noticed, oh, I thought it had some engraving on it, but I guess it doesn't. So this is a good start here. And look, there's some weird things like this has a hook that comes all the way over and crosses over the, the hand. I'm not sure if any of my other images had that, I guess a little bit here, but not really on this one. So this could be a bastardization of that sword, which would be changing it slightly to fit some sort of fiction or other purpose. Uh, or it could be something that was commonly done. It even looks like a bird head in this one. And oh, look, there's some like Greek design elements going along the blade length. So that's really cool. This is a really good way to start out any sort of project uh, or assignment that if you're gonna paint something from imagination, if you're gonna design something fantasy. Uh, here's someone actually following this process, it appears, where they've got different kinds of weapon that are clearly fantasy inspired or maybe even the product of some like historical catastrophe like um, the, the big volcano explosion that happened in the Mediterranean. I forget the name at the moment. Um, but you should always do this process early on. I recommend that any question you have about what should I design, you should go right to visual reference first. You should start looking at different things, get inspired. And even if you just think that the thing might be useful, toss it in the reference folder. Um, there's no real problem with having too many pictures in here. Just delete them if you end up downloading too many. But at least spend like a half an hour doing this. That's probably a very small amount of time uh, depending on larger projects. But for a single project where you're just gonna paint or draw like a single weapon, that's the bare minimum that you could do to start out your design process right, okay? Uh, in the next part, I'll talk about how to start adding some fantasy elements to this and doing research about those elements and then combining these things together.